Hi, everybody. Welcome to our webinar tonight. Uh, if you want to go ahead and start adding some questions to this poll EV, you can go to pollev.com slash first PTC one, two, three. And this will be open the whole time as we're presenting. So feel free to just keep adding and then we'll get back to these questions at the end of the webinar. We'll wait a couple more minutes for some people to trickle in and then we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you. Again, this poll is going to be open the whole time. So if you have questions during the webinar, just go to pollev.com slash first PTC, one, two, three, add them, and we'll get to them at the end. So let's get started. Obviously, you're all here for the Robots to the Rescue webinar tonight, or at least I hope you are. I'm Domenico Damari. If you've been emailing first at PTC, I've probably been the one responding to you. I'm an academic application engineer here at PTC, and I'm joined by Mackenzie Brunel, who's also an academic application engineer, uh, and Mark Chelly, who will be managing some of the questions in the background. So tonight's agenda, we're going to start by taking a look at what judges are looking for in your submissions, how things are going to be graded, and scored uh, just to give you a better idea of how to tailor your submissions. We're also going to quickly go over how to submit, what the submission process is, and just making sure you're all set to do that. And then finally, we'll end with some Q&A. So some quick clarifications. We've already covered this briefly, but we still see some questions, and we just want to make it clear to everybody. With alliances, any number of FRC and or FTC teams can be in an alliance together. If you're on multiple alliances, that's fine. Each team, though, will be submitting their own robot and own documentation. And you're going to be scored individually. But if you're in an alliance and when you submit, note that everybody will be getting that alliance bonus. We'd also like to clarify a little bit about the robot requirements. So there are the size constraints. They're listed on our rules and guidelines webpage. Uh, they're pretty straightforward, but one of them we see a lot is uh, with the height for the FRC teams. That is the max height. You can't extend past that 45 inches. That's the max height. When we're talking about uh, reaching past the perimeter, that's just X and Y per se. The, the sides, not up the 45. We also talk a little bit about the allowed materials for FTC. Uh, FTC teams have to follow section 7.3.2, which basically is just, you know, you can only use standard aluminum, plastic, uh, other metals, et cetera. And that's the only main rule. You, we will talk about this a little bit more in detail when we talk about how judges are going to score. Same with the FRC side. All the, with the FRC side, you do have to follow the motors and actuators. Again, they, we'll clarify a little bit about this on uh, later in the presentation. So let's get started talking about what judges are looking for. So the first item in the rubric is the problem definition. So this is what's going into your uh, document that you're writing up. And the problem definition it scored pretty clearly from one point being you didn't explain what the problem is, there's no research, it's just ambiguous, to the other side, five points, you've clearly explained the problem, there's research that's supporting it, and it's just very clear to the judges who are reading. So what we want to highlight are some questions to think about when you're writing this section and obviously what problem are you solving you, you want to answer that question but also what we'd like to see is how is this uh, problem 
important to your team specifically, as well as the world? What what really is the impact of this problem? And you know, and fixing the problem, how could that affect the world? Additionally, we'd like to see you maybe clarify what specific part of the problem you're solving, because one robot isn't necessarily going to say solve world hunger, but a robot might, improdu might uh, improve the yields of corn or something more specific. So we'd like to see you discuss that. This should obviously be backed up by statistics and facts, and this can be research, references that you include, anything that shows the impact of the problem. And finally, maybe you would want to include the reason that a robot should solve this problem. Are there easier ways to solve it? And ideally there aren't, and the robot really is something that can change this. I don't know if Mackenzie has anything to add to this, but I think it's pretty straightforward that we're really just looking for you to explain to us what the problem is. Yeah, the only other thing I'd say, if you're wondering about these questions, uh, if you look at that example document that we shared on the website, on that first page, um, you could see some of these questions and we'll also be posting the recording of this. So if you are kind of scrambling to get these questions down, definitely don't worry about it. We'll get the recording onto YouTube as soon as possible. And then you can also, Again, look at that example document for these questions. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. I don't see too many questions on this, but we'll obviously get back to it later if there are. So now let's talk a little bit about the next two components in the rubric, and these pertain to the CAD model and what you're actually designing in Onshape. So a Big thing I'd like to clarify right now is the criteria for utilization of first components. And we've seen this question come up time and time and again. And what judges are looking for is that you followed rules for FTC 7.3.2 and for FRC 9.6. If you followed those rules and only those rules, uh, you would get, let's see. Uh, you, you get basically two points. And that's because you haven't really included any of the other components that are standard in FIRST or required by FIRST. So for example, if you look at three points, adheres to the robot requirements, which is the, the rules for Onshape that we, for this Onshape competition that we've given. But then it also says uses some required FIRST components such as the PDP radio or the battery. So you, only included a couple things from the first competition. On the other side with five points, not only have you followed the rules we've given, you've also followed all of the rules pertaining to the robot requirements for first, and you've been innovative and unique using those first components. So to clarify, to get the five points, you would have to have followed all of our rules as well as all of the first rules pertaining to the robot and somehow come up with an innovative and unique way to use what first components to do something different and unique to solve the problem. So I think that's something that some teams have been a little bit unclear about. Hopefully that clarifies that a little bit for you guys and you can go forward kind of knowing that if you only adhered to our requirements and included the PDP radio and battery, you'd be getting the four points. So say that's, you know, you included some water containment or gel containment, the max you could get in this would be four points because you didn't follow all the rules for uh, the first competition. But one point isn't a world ending thing, especially if it's allowed you to solve a unique problem. And that'll be shown by you guys getting more points in other areas. Another thing we'd like to clarify is with the completeness and complexity of design. Um, this is a little bit more straightforward where while, we're, while um, we're looking at your design in CAD, we obviously see that there are missing components and things aren't fully constrained and you just really haven't made an assembly. That's one point. 
whereas you get five points if every single possible component you could possibly need is in that assembly and you're using complex mechanisms like gears and uh, gears is a big one um, what's the other one rack and pinion using a rack and pinion some of these more complex mechanisms to show the motion and just fully have a CAD model of what you would build and how it would interact with kinematics in real life. And so we just want to clarify that for everybody. It should be pretty straightforward. Again, questions, I'll take a look right now and see if there's anything. So we see a couple so questions question. about, oh. yep, sorry. So go ahead, I was gonna ask you one of the questions. You can go ahead and answer. <laughs> okay, so do we need to include the phone and controllers in the final CAD model? So I'm gonna assume that's talking about the FTC side and those are required components by first. So if you wanted to get those five points, um, and or even four points, we would definitely want you to include uh, that phone and those controllers. Um, and that being said, you definitely don't have to go out and CAD your own phone. That's definitely where we want you to be incorporating some of those public on shape models that you can find out there. Yeah, thank you, Mackenzie. There's also a question about the height. Um, so. If the team added a lift to get higher afterwards to the hum uh, human eye, is that not allowed for FRC if they go beyond that frame perimeter? Yeah, that, that wouldn't be allowed because you're constrained to that max 45 inch height. Um, I'm gonna assume the human eye for most people, at least adults is over 45 inches. So uh, I'm assuming you're over 45 inches and that technically wouldn't be allowed. Uh, Maybe you could tailor it towards children or people in hospital beds or just spin it in some other way so that you can still kind of do what you're planning. Uh, but yes, that would be too tall. And then another question about, um, do we get more bonus points for each alliance that we have? No, so with the alliances, you get five points if you're in an alliance. And even if you're in 10 alliances, it's still just five points. So um, let's keep going on what judges are looking for. And again, we'll get back to some of these Q&A questions later. So with the ability to solve the problem, uh, this is kind of a two-part thing where it's some judges will be not only looking at your CAD to see that is your, is your CAD design actually gonna solve the problem, but this is also something you should probably be addressing in your documentation, in your write-up, so that it's clear and straightforward, especially while you're describing, describing the problem there. Um, so some questions we'd like you to think about and hopefully answer. How does your robot solve the problem? Another thing that we'd like you to highlight and would really help you with the judges and especially maybe some of those other awards we're giving out is, uh, is asking yourself what features of your robot are innovative and should be highlighted. Maybe you're doing something unique that you, you've, you've never seen before, um, that you haven't during your research found, uh, just something that you think should be pointed out to us as we're, as we're reading through these submissions kind of along the same lines, what are the strengths and weaknesses of, weaknesses of your uh, robot? With any design, there's gonna be some of these weaknesses and that's something that a good designer and engineer should be thinking about and should be able to speak to. So we'd like it if you included that in your write-up. And then in your write-up, you could also integrate some sort of diagram or uh, rendering of your CAD model just to highlight to the people judging that you you know what your robot's doing. So again, 
with five points, we're looking for robot mechanisms that are uniquely and innovatively designed to address all the requirements. So you've gone above and beyond and designed some new complex mechanism or some simple mechanism that's just being used in a, in a unique way to help address that problem. Uh, lastly, we have the feasibility of your robot, and this is something we've seen some confusion with, especially when it comes to the five points category of looking for a design that is complete with manufacturing documentation. We've had a lot of questions about what is this manufacturing documentation you're talking about, and really what it is, is what documentation would you need to give somebody who doesn't know anything about your robot? to be able to build your robot. So this would be things like uh, dimensions on a drawing. So somebody can go out and make that part. Maybe you've thought about what manufacturing methods would be used for some of those custom parts. It's, it's important to show to us as well as the people that might be building your robot how to do it. And so drawings are important. Uh, a bill of materials that includes information like price, material, uh, weight, all th those kind of things would be important to have here as well. But what we're really looking for you to addre address, and you can include this in your write-up, is how easy is the robot to assemble? Have you thought about designing for uh, you know, manufacturing? Or is it incredibly complex and somebody who's looking at your CAD model might realize there's no way for you to get this screw or bolt in and out. So we're looking for things to highlight that you've thought about how this would actually be manufactured in real life. Do we have any questions about that specifically? I don't see any questions about that <laughs> specific um, extra judging. Awesome. So now we're going to highlight a little bit about submission, the submission process. And I'm going to talk a little bit about it, and then we'll actually step through and show you our example submission document and the submission form. So one thing we want to highlight before submission, please take a look at our example submission document, double check the rules and guidelines, double check the rubric, just so you know you've addressed anything you think you want to. It's also important that you import your PDF and any other files you want to see into your final Onshape document. All you will be submitting in regards to things we're gonna look at is that final Onshape document. So any documentation you write up, it needs to be in that Onshape document. If you happen to have an Excel spreadsheet or something with anything else you want us to look at, it has to be imported into that Onshape document double check, make sure you, you've got everything in there and you're ready to submit. Uh, because after you submit, we're gonna be making a copy uh, of your document to ensure that when you submit, you can't change anything afterwards, make sure nobody has an unfair advantage there. So changes will not be scored or recorded. So make sure you're 100% certain you've done. And this is important and we'll highlight it a couple of times, is the owner of your team's Onshape document, which is the original creator, unless you've changed owner, owner somehow, has to make the document public and turn on link sharing, because when you submit, you'll be uh, sharing that link with us. So it's important that it's public and that link sharing is on. So let's take a look real quick at our example submission document here. So as you can see down at the bottom, there's some assemblies, there's some parts, there's some drawings. Over here, we have an example of what your write-up might look like. It includes some of these um, questions that we've talked about tonight in order to help you think about this later. And this is just an example. You don't have to follow this template. Um, feel free to do anything you want. In regards to the actual document that we want, we want three pages. That's not including the title uh, page up here. 
And if you have drawings, we're not, you don't worry about the number of drawings or anything like that. We're purely worried about the three page write up of what you're actually writing. You can also see we've got an assembly in here with our mock robot. And additionally, you can make these drawings that maybe you want to highlight what material it's made out of, how it's going to be manufactured. You can do that on a drawing, as well as show that you've thought about what dimensions are necessary for somebody to actually go out and make this. If you didn't already know, in order to import a PDF, all you have to do is click this plus button down here, the insert element, hit import, and then find whatever PDF, wherever it is on your computer to import it. So in order to submit it, this is the submission form, which you can find in an email we've sent out to everybody who's registered. It's also on our rules and guidelines page here the big submission form. Uh, it also covers a little bit about how to submit and you know, making sure that you've got all your, your document ready. We're basically going to ask some, this, some straightforward information, what program, what team number, what team name. This is important that a mentor fill this form out, a mentor or a coach fill this form out because we'll be contacting them if there's any issues. So please have your mentor or coach fill it out. So we also would like to know how many students worked on this project, how many students are on your team, just so we get to have an idea of what, what kind of effort was required to do this. So on the second page of the submission, we will, you will actually be linking your Onshape document We've got this nice little video showing you how to actually do that. But I'd also like to show you over here. When you share it with us, you need to actually share it. First, you need to make it public. The only person that can make a file public is the owner. So up here, whoever it says owned by, in this case me, has to make it public. And then they have to also turn on link sharing. So that gives them this link to actually share the document to us. So that can be copied and pasted into the form down here. We also have a couple of questions about allowing us to show your uh, design to other first teams. When we have our uh, final awards uh, ceremony, we're going to want to show off everybody's submission. So if you don't want us to do that, you, you can tell us that here. And we're, we also would like to share these documents at a later time with other first teams on Onshape to be a reference. So please give us the, the permission to do that here as well. So once we do that, we'll be on the last page of the form, which is to fill out the bonus points. Uh, these basically align right up with the bonus points on the rubric. Did you work in Alliance? Yes. You'd give us the team number that you worked with. Did you utilize versions? Tell us which part you utilized it in so we can go and check that. Did you create a part studio with multiple parts? Again, tell us which part studio it is so we can go and check that. Did you use any parts from the public first library? We need a link for that. Did you provide a help session? And how many people? How'd you do it? Just something to show that you actually did, uh, did these things. And then once you hit submit, it's submitted. You're done. You can't make any more changes. And we'll go ahead and judge it and score it for you. So again, I'd like to highlight the mentor or coach should fill out this submission form. There's three pages. It's relatively quick and painless, hopefully, but it makes sure that we score your document and submission accordingly, it gets you all those bonus points that you want. And it's, this is important. The deadline is 11.59 EDT on May 15th. We won't be accepting anything after that. Uh, don't uh, 
play it fast and loose and accident, accidentally submit it at 1201, uh, please. <laughs> and oops, my bad. But yeah, 1159 EDT. That's the, the last time you guys can submit on May 15th. Some resources, if you still are having some trouble, you can go to the new to CAD and familiar with CAD uh, pathways on the Onshape Learning Center, which is a great resource and where I personally learned how to use Onshape. We also have two great parts libraries, the FRC MK CAD parts library and Team 2901's part library. Uh, if you need access still to the FTC one, please email us at firstsetptc.com and we'll get you added as soon as possible. The rules and guidelines are available on onshape.com slash robots to the rescue slash guidelines. Uh, it's, if you still have any questions about that after this and after we've gone through some of your Q&A, again, just email us at firstsetptc.com and make sure to check out our example submission document. We have one more webinar. We have the Robots to the Rescue office hour on Tuesday for any last minute questions, concerns, comments. We'll be ready to take them on Tuesday. We will also be having our award ceremony. So keep an eye out for emails if you've registered and you can follow PTC Academic on social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, all that good stuff. And we'll be announcing when, how that's gonna work and everything like that. So keep an eye out for that. And now let's kind of go to some of your questions. Um, there was a specific question about how you make drawings going back to that, talking about manufacturing documentation. And I would definitely recommend looking at the Learning Center. Um, I know you just showed some of those resources. So that's definitely a good place to find um, any of that information. And then at our Q&A, uh, next Tuesday, we can also do some demos in on shape of some of these questions. Yeah, um, a question sure. we've gotten a few times. Yep. Um, is do we need to attach screws and wires? So ideally, uh, yes, that's that would be part of a complete CAD model. Um, in regards to screws, there are there is a built in on shape standard parts library that will have a lot of the standard fasteners you are going to use. So I, I highly recommend utilizing that. Uh, whenever you import a part into assembly, that'll be an option. Um, so you can take a look at that. And what was the other half of that question? Wires? Wires and screws, yep. If you want to go above and beyond and really impress the judges, please try to include the wires. I know there are some great feature scripts out there that you can utilize. They do make it a little hard to have wires going through parts that move. So maybe that's something you could do with a configuration in Onshape to have a different configuration with those wires shown and then have the mates that move and and show kinematics in a different configuration. So you don't have to you don't have to mention the bonus points in your document. Just fill that out in the form. Uh, we'll definitely take care of that and give you those bonus points. However, talking about the problem and how you solved it, maybe in your alliance, uh, your robot is solving part of the problem and your alliance member's robot is solving another part. That's definitely something you can bring out in, bring up in your, your discussion of how you solve the problem. And that's something I'm sure judges would be happy to read about and would, would consider too going towards points for innovatively solving a problem. Um, there's a follow-up question for the wiring, which is, are all wires required to be shown? Or can we just have a graphic to show a wiring harness or bundle? And similarly for air hoses. 
yeah, either option is great. Uh, whatever you feel most comfortable doing, uh, the more you show, the, the, the better the judges will score you. Uh, but don't do it to the detriment of being able to show all the kinematics and being able to uh, you know, really finish your robot. Don't get too bogged down into adding thousands and thousands of wires. So if you have to include if you have to include phones and controllers, I'm assuming that you have to include a battery as well. How about alliance markers? Uh, so we're not too concerned about you having those kind of alliance markers. If you if you want to and you have extra time, I'm sure it would make your robot stand out in terms of uh, aesthetic design. Definitely, you want to include that battery as well. It's it's listed on the rubric as some of those standard components that we want to see FTC and FRC teams uh, include. Uh, I think I just showed you how to provide public links for the part studios. So you should be only sharing with us one document. That document should have all of your parts studios, it should have your assemblies, it should have anything you want us to see in it. And so you make that whole document public and then you sh uh, turn on link sharing and send us that link. So you're only sending us one link, one link from your document. Did I just see some questions about people asking if they developed something in one part in one document and then they need to move it over? Um, and so what we can do on in our Tuesday webinar is try and do a uh, demo of how you would actually go about moving something from one document to another. Yeah, that's a little bit of a hard question. Uh, it, it's a little bit different depending on how things were made originally and what what type of things you're trying to move around. Are you trying to move around a whole assembly or a whole part or just a part studio? It's a little bit different and we can definitely get into that on our office hours. If we are using flexible pipes, then how do we show the kinematics of that? As as far as I know, there is not really a way to do that in Onshape. I don't think anybody, any of the judges are going to be expecting for you to have somehow created a flexible pipe in, in Onshape. So don't worry about that. If you really want to go above and beyond, you can make configurations. And with configurations, you could choose to have your assembly show those pipes in a specific orientation and configuration, and then have those pipes turned off when you're trying to show the kinematics of, you know, say an arm or the wheels where the pipes actually connect. So don't worry about that too much. Nobody's expecting you to have any sort of flexible uh, piping. Can you edit the PDF after importing it into Onshape? The answer is no. So if you are writing something up, write it up, double check it, save it as your PDF, and then import it into Onshape. I think it's also worth, worth mentioning that if you upload that same PDF again, it will just overwrite the previous version of it. So you, you have the ability to update the PDF, but you can't edit it. Yeah, thank you, Mark. That's also a good moment for a reminder that once you do submit everything, um, we're going to be making a copy of what you've submitted. So if you edit anything, even if you tried to re-import anything, um, if you tried to edit your models, once you've submitted, that's going to be it. And we won't see anything you do after we get that link to your Onshape document. Yep. Will there be another um, webinar? Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. 
Will there be another webinar about building a chassis? Uh, no, we, we're having one more webinar on Tuesday, which will be in open office hours. If you're, you're having any sort of issue with that, we can maybe address that there. Otherwise, feel free to email us at first at ptc.com or check out some of the learning pathways. We also worked with building a chassis in the FRC and FTC webinars using the kit of parts and some of the feature script there. So you might want to take a look at our YouTube page and the playlist for the Robots to the Rescue competition, because there were some short demos about building a chassis there. I also like to shout out, um, while there might not be anything before this submission is over, in the preparation for next season, there's definitely a lot of teams that do some great learning or provide some great learning in the off season. So I know if you keep an eye on Chief Delphi or on the FTC Reddit, there's a lot of people that are doing things. For example, um, Team 2901 is doing something during the off season where they're teaching people, I think it's every Saturday that they're doing a class in On Shape. And then Marcus Bernstein posted on the FRC side that he's done some intro to CAD classes. And so I know both of those resources would also be great to help your team learn. And I'm sure there's plenty of other community created content. And then if you keep an eye out on what we do to get ready for next season, um, there could be some more materials coming out. We haven't gotten that far ahead, but definitely keep an eye on what everyone else is doing in the community. And you can definitely get help for, for, with that from someone. Yeah, definitely. And we've got another question about if some sensors don't have any wire inputs or outputs, how do we connect them to the expansion hub? Uh, I'm not 100% familiar with what type of inputs and outputs an ex the expansion hub can take. Um, maybe Mackenzie, if you know anything about that, you could chime in. I'm also not sure they don't. So in this case, then, it's more of an electrical and uh, software side of an issue. Uh, maybe you need some sort of breakout board to use those sensors or some sort of data, other, some sort of other data acquisition system. Uh, it really just depends on the system you have and what you're trying to use those sensors to do. So that's a pretty specific question and is something I think you should try to figure out to really make your robot work well. Um, I'd also like to shout out here another one of the bonus points is for providing a help session to another team. So whatever team posted that, if you also want to start reaching out on some of those forums that other teams are kind of frequenting and ask for help on that, and maybe a team will be willing to provide you a help session to get some of those bonus points. Um, yeah, I'm definitely. looking at the go to webinar q a there are a couple of questions there um one is can an frc robot increase in size such as in the competition but then come back down to the starting position of 45 inches so the rule again with the 45 inches that's the max height of the robot at any time you can't exceed that and come back down so if your robot say started shorter at 30 inches and extended to 45 that would be acceptable but where the the rule and what we've been telling all the teams is that the 45 inches is the max height in any configuration and i would like to say too if you think about the um horizontal dimension you can move i believe it's 20 inches outside of your frame perimeter that way but it's just the vertical dimension that we're saying strict on that 45 inches We have a question here about the write-up. Uh, thought we only had a max three-page PDF. You mentioned an Excel spreadsheet, so we can have extra documentation too. So bill of material or extra do uh, data can be beyond those three pages. So with the three-page PDF, that's, that's your write-up. That's your explanation of the problem, how you're going to solve it. Uh, so yeah, we want that to be three pages. If you have a bill of materials, um, that's definitely, you, you can consider that an appendix or just a separate uh, Excel spreadsheet in 
in your uh, Onshape document, that's that's definitely fine, as well as any sort of uh, manufacturing drawings that you might have made. Those are a, a separate tab that won't be counted towards your three-page PDF. Uh, same with the title page. So it, it's really just uh, talking about your your write-up. And I'd also recommend yeah, for that to, bill of materials yeah. to look at the Onshape feature to actually fill in that bill of materials in Onshape. So you can be filling in some of that information in the software and not have to import something extra. Yeah, to, to go off of that, there, there's a lot of features in Onshape for adding what you might call documentation, right? I mean, drawings is an example of that, but also the bill of materials feature that Mackenzie talked about. So all of those just kind of add additional information to your model. And obviously none of that counts counts into your PDF because it, it's actually a part of the model and um, an industry that's that's really important to, to have your model have as much information as possible um, for other engineers that are looking at it. Yeah, thank you, Mark. So if we submit the on-shape document a bit late, will we still be considered for scoring? Uh, in this case, uh, no. Uh, we've, we've set that uh, May 15th as the deadline for a while. I just clarify that it's going to be at 11.59. And as much as we want to get every single on shape document that you guys have made, just to be fair to everybody, everybody needs to have that same deadline. Yeah, and just to add into that too, I mean, you, not if if you can't get it in by that time, like that's certainly fine. You you won't be considered for the prizes at the end, but uh, we would still encourage you to to share it with us. And you know, if you would like, uh, you know for everybody who says that it's okay, we will publish these models for people in the future uh, because it is really good to look at, you know, a whole big library of all these great models that you've all made. Um, so if if you aren't able to get it on time, but you still want to share it with us, uh, we certainly love to, to have it for, from you. Yeah, for sure. We're definitely all excited here to see all of your submissions and to be able to put them all together and look at them together and share them back with you so you guys can see everything else that everybody did. Uh, we're definitely very excited about that. What do we need to do to get the utilized versions feature bonus points? So all you need to do is utilize the version somewhere um, in your document. And just real quick, if you don't know where that is, that's up here. You can create a version. And as long as it's used in some sort of way in your, in your design, as long as that version's used in some sort of way, then you can get those bonus points. So how do you want us to highlight and indicate animatable mates, particularly when the mate animation gives a choice of direction or axis? You don't need to worry too much about highlighting your, your mates. Um, we are going to be having some judges, some of them on shape engineers, experts in using on shape and making assemblies. So they're going to know what to look for. They're going to, they're going to know and see that you have made a complete model with these kinds of mates. So you definitely don't have to really highlight it in any way. Um, I don't even really know how you would highlight it per se. There's a, a related question to that, which is uh, can, you know, the embedding um, regarding showing like animations of, of the robot and kind of making sure that, that that's illustrated. Um, in Onshape, you can also upload videos and GIFs uh, that you may have seen into the document. Um, that's if you really want to make sure that, that that's something we see. I mean, we're going to look through these documents uh, pretty pretty detailed. Uh, but if that's something you also wanted to include just to ensure that, you know, you wanted to show the, the sequence of your robot unfolding or something to that effect, you can certainly include that as well. 
um, as, as something that you know we may take a look at as we review your model. Yeah, thank you. Um, seeing that specific question at the top there about submitting late, if you have any specific circumstances, feel free to email first at ttc.com um, and we can talk with you about um, anything that you may be going through and what we can work out to resolve that issue. Yeah, thank you, Mackenzie. Well, for FTC teams allowed to use the control hub instead of the expansion and phone, control hub is only allowed for certain regions for the past season, but it's legal for next season for all regions. Mackenzie, do you have any thoughts on this? Yep. Yeah, that's fine, especially since it was legal for certain places this season, I'd say you can go ahead with that. What is the maximum increase in pages of documentation that judges would accept without cutting off points? Please try to keep your uh, PDFs to three pages um, of documentation there. Um, that's, that's what we're looking for. Um, something I would say just from our process perspective, we're going to have two sets of judges. We're going to have judges that are looking at the three page um, submission. They're only going to look at the three pages to score some of the things like the problem you're solving and um, does the robot solve the problem. And then we're also going to have some more technical judges. And so they may look at some of the additional documentation to answer some of the points. But for your write up that says, like, this is the problem we solved and this is how the robot does it, that can only be the three pages. Yeah, I think one way to, to also kind of just hammer that home is uh, we can guarantee you that we will look at three pages of documentation. If you include other things that are, are interesting in there, um, we may see that as we go through the reviewing process, but we will not explicitly be looking for anything other than three pages. So uh, please keep it to three just so that we can go through our process and you know we expect to have well over 200 submissions. So we, we need to have some level of limitation there. Um, but you know if you have an image or a video, as I said, like that could somewhat be construed as documentation. So there's kind of a blurred line that's hard for us to, to strictly say some of those things. Yeah, and going along with that, we've got a question about may we add more sections um, than on the example for our, for our write-up. That was just an example we, we threw together to help give you some guidance. If you have other ideas for sections, uh, feel free. You don't have to follow our example by any means. Uh, but you know, definitely to get the maximum score, you, you'll want to tailor those sections to, to the rubric. If we have um, the question about when it started, it started at uh, the be beginning of April, just <laughs> so you know. Uh, yeah, beginning of April. <laughs> it feels like a lifetime ago. If we have an <laughs> increased amount of feasibility for bonus points, such as contributing more than five parts, or having large alliances, or having FTC, FRC alliances, providing more extra work or anything else, does it help in our judging? No, so those are limits on the points. So if you submit more than five points, you'll only get five, or more than five parts, you'll only get the five points. You'll only get five points if you're in an alliance, regardless of if it's FTC, FRC, if it's 10 teams or one team. Um, so those, the, what you see in the rubric is the cap. So if it says up to a certain number, that is, that is the cap. Yeah, thank you, Mackenzie. Yeah, and I think one one point to call out there is that is for um, the the point system. Uh, you know, if if two robots score every point possible, right? At which point, uh, and if you, you can see this on the rubric, we've kind of specified what uh, how regular points go into bonus points and how it goes into from there. Um, at 
you know, if, if two teams are just completely tied, we will have to make some level of judgment call. So we'll look at any, you know, the, the how well the robot solves a problem, how complex the model is, what the what the problem is. Like we will look at all of the categories to compare those two robots that, that both have the same score. Yeah. Uh, can we have a virus tester on our robot? So this goes back to the, 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 the rubric about what kind of components can you have on your robot. So yes, you can have a virus tester on your robot. Um, however, that, that's not a FRC or FTC uh, part that's in the rubric. You haven't followed all the requirements. So you won't be able to get that, that score of five even if everything else about your robot uh, follows the FTC, FRC rules. So it's a bit of a trade-off there, and that's something you might want to think about, is if that helps you solve the problem, then maybe it's worth it that you, you won't get a five in the, in the following the first um, components rule. But that's, so that's something you might want to consider. Uh, kind of the same thing. Again, you can have, you don't have to follow all of the first rules about sharp objects, liquids, uh, different sensors that you wouldn't normally include on a robot. You can have those things, but you, you won't be eligible for that score of five uh, where you're using standard first components innovatively. You, you, your robot uses some non-first components. But if that helps you, solve your problem, then by all means, include it. To what extent can we use the software potential in the robot? Can we give a code, pseudocode, to back up our use of software tools like image processing? Uh, for sure, if you, you, if you want to give us some sort of pseudocode or some sort of um, you know, image-based flow diagram of what your code might do on your robot. Uh, that definitely shows us how uh, shows us how your robot's going to solve those problems. It's also definitely a way to be considered for uh, some sort uh, some of the extra awards we're giving out. Um, so go right ahead. Um, that's something you can include either as a PDF or um, some sort of chart in your documentation or in your Onshape document. I don't know if Mark or Mackenzie have anything to add on including code in their submissions. Yeah, I, I think. Yeah, it sounds sounds like a great idea. Um, I mean, anything that really kind of shows the completeness and thoughtfulness of your design, uh, I think, is great. And the code is a perfect example of that. So we've got a question about including wheels in your in your design um, if your robot doesn't need wheels um, you don't have to, you definitely don't have to include them um, Mackenzie is that a rule in the the first rule books that that robots have to have wheels no so I mean typically on any of the FRC or FTC games you would need them just to play the game but for this case, because you aren't playing the game, you definitely don't need the wheels. Would they still be eligible to get the five points in their, their um, following the first rules? Yeah, that'd be fine. OK. When will this video be uploaded? Uh, very, very soon. As, as soon as we're done here, we'll send it off to get get um, added um, but we'll let you know it'll be uploaded onto our um, the webinar page on the rules and guidelines it'll be uh, the link will be posted there or you can check our YouTube page 
definitely by the end of the day tomorrow. Um, we do have to send it to someone at PTC to get it uploaded. So um, I would say by the end of the day, you could definitely see it. It looks like we have some people excited about doing this again next year. Um, it's definitely something we're considering, but we, uh, we haven't quite decided and it'll be a decision for later. We're glad you've enjoyed it and want to do it again. And we definitely can't wait to see all the different designs and how you have used Onshape in new ways. Yeah, it's definitely been really fun. This is the first time we've ever done something like this with PTC or Onshape. So um, that being said, we're, we'd love to do something like this. We definitely welcome any feedback you have. Um, we sent out an email to everyone who was registered for the competition that included a feedback survey. So if you have any feedback for if we did something like this next year that you think we should include or change or do differently, we're definitely um, looking for that sort of feedback as well, just so we could improve for next year if we did do something like this. Yeah, and that survey will get sent out again. Um, it's completely anonymous. Even if you have um, any sort of comments or concerns that that it might impact your team score, it, it's not. It's completely anonymous, and we really just want your genuine feedback. To what extent can we use the autonomous mode in our robot, or does the robot always have to be remote controlled? Um, you can you can determine that on your own um, with the coding uh, question we answered a little bit ago. Uh, if you want to include your code or how you think the robot um, a functional breakdown of the code, feel free. Um, obviously, within the within Onshape, there is there's really no way to remote control or autonomously control your your robot. So. That's something you don't have to include in the CAD in any sort of way. But if you do have thoughts on that, uh, please please add it to the documentation. It definitely uh, goes towards showing the judges you've thought about how um, your robot can solve the problem and how much uh, time a, a user might have to put into actually using the robot. Would you cut points if we use a multitude of software platforms platforms for perhaps animations, coding, and CADing imports instead of pseudocodes or onshape animations? So the requirements for this competition are you you design a part in onshape and you you uh, make your assembly in onshape. So anything else you want to add into the um, into the Onshape document, you're more than welcome to. Uh, obviously, it's a, it might be a little bit hard to do your uh, whatever type of coding it is that you want to do within Onshape. So if you're using some sort of other uh, software for coding, feel free to just you know add that as some sort of text file or some way that we can read it within Onshape. Uh, you are allowed to import uh, parts from other CAD um, programs, if you've had parts from previous years that you want to use, or if you've uh, downloaded parts from uh, some sort of manufacturer and they're not on shape parts, you're, you're welcome to import those into your, into your document. Uh, nobody's going to take points off for that. Um, so you don't, you don't have to worry about that. Yeah. Just yeah and definitely if that, you've to... had previous, sorry. No, go ahead, McKinley. I was going to say, if you have used previous CAD platforms um, and you want some help with that importing and looking at how you can get all of your old CAD data, we did do a webinar on switching from another CAD platform. So I'd recommend looking at that one too. And, and just to add to, to that too, um, you know, so the rubric lays out how you how you earn points, how you gain points. Uh, there's nothing that uh, we we have like we don't have a secret rubric where we're subtracting points or anything like that. So so not anything to to worry about there. Yeah, we also know we're not the only software on Earth. You know, there's there's plenty of other software. So you know, we're we're under no guises or illusions about that.
I mean, to be fair, we have two softwares at our company. <laughs> Um, there's a, a series of questions that I kind of see coming up specifically around documentation and, you know, having documentation that might be helpful for your model, but maybe isn't in the three page limit. Uh, to make that clear, you know, for, for the purposes of judging, we need to have, you know, really clearly in your document, an assembly, which is the top level assembly of your model and the three page document that really explains what your model does, right? We, we need those two things to be there for like logistical purposes. Um, but, you know, we totally recognize, you know, someone, someone mentioned, can we have documentation that lays out, you know, what the different sub assemblies are and, and kind of why they're structured the way they are. Uh, obviously that would be useful for us as, as we look at your model and try and understand it a little bit. So we would encourage you to include some of those things, uh, but, and you know, uh, so there's not any limit on how many PDFs you can have, but we do need to make it, you know, really clear what the summary document is and then what the actual on-shape model is. And, you know, if you write a 10-page paper that you put in there, there's no guarantee that we will read the whole thing. Uh, but just, just to make that kind of clear that, you know, if you have an, an additional image or you have something else that you want to show and you think that really is great to include, we don't want you to omit it. Uh, but we do want it to be kind of clean and clear, the top level assembly and uh, the primary uh, document that, that's only three pages in length. Yeah, thank you, Mark. It's definitely a good idea to think about uh, as you're making your, your document to send to us, if, make it as clear as possible all the, all the things you want us to grade. We, we have to open up hundreds of these and make sure we grade them and we want to do as great of a job looking at everything you want us to see. But that means maybe uh, you guys being a little bit considerate, considerate about uh, thinking about how would somebody who wasn't involved in designing your, your uh, robot, how would they come in and look at that? If our idea is only applicable once or twice a year, but it's highly effective, would it affect the judging perspectives for the idea? So this kind of talks, of, I, I think, would mostly apply to the uh, problem definition. Um, if, it's, uh, if it's not a, a huge problem, maybe it, it wouldn't really, it, it doesn't really apply, but if you can provide some sort of, uh, you know, reference material, some sort of statistics on you know, how big of a problem this is and that you thought about, you know, building this robot that might cost, you know, whatever, a hundred dollars, but it, it, it fixes a problem that causes hundreds of thousands of dollars of, um, of cost to, to industry or it, it affects lots of people's lives. If you can highlight uh, some things like that, that's definitely something judges uh, will look at and be uh, pleased to see and score you better if you if you can show how even though it might not be a huge problem your your robot is a elegant solution and is not only elegant but but solves the the problem cost effectively and it's something that should be should be implemented yeah to to go off of that as well when we when we created this uh rubric one of the things we were specifically keeping in mind with the product uh the the definition of your problem was uh we wanted big problems and small problems and you know like you say here problems that only affect a small period of time versus pro problems that affect a large period of time um you know for example you could make a robot that just helps this one person and this one person has a problem, but that problem is a very big problem for that one person. Uh, so the the solution you provide would would make a major impact on that person's life, right? That is just as important as maybe a robot that helps many many people, but with a small part of their life, right? So just as long as that's clear and articulated, and we really get the idea that this is actually a really important thing, that's really what you're trying to do in that that definite that problem definition section is why why should we care about this? this problem enough for there to be a robot to solve it. I think too, I'd like to highlight there, this could be a personal problem. I know, again, so many teams are facing, I mean, first is a global program. Everyone everywhere is facing some different things right now. So if it's something that your team is facing, 
that maybe the rest of us in the first community don't know about. We're definitely like, we, we want to see that and highlight some of those problems that everyone's facing. And we're definitely um, interested to hear everything that you're solving, big or small. Yeah, thank you. So it looks like we're going a little bit over time. So we'll maybe answer one or two more questions and then um, head off for the night. So we got one more question, uh, question about, should I include it, um, files I added to the parts library in my submission? Uh, hopefully you're making parts that you're, you're using and uh, have helped you and you're uploading those to the library. But if you just decided to help out a library and make a part that you weren't actually going to use, that's great as well. Um, so we're just going to be asking for you to provide a link to that, that part, or even if it's not a part in your, in your, in your submission, that's completely fine. Uh, and to go on that, I know, um, so there's a couple of different part libraries that people are contributing to. There's the FTC team 2901's library that many of the FTC teams have been added to. And for that one, we highly recommend look at the documentation for how to contribute to that part library. They've done an amazing job of paving the way for everyone to contribute to that library. So please be looking at that documentation when you're adding parts um, so we can kind of keep to the standards that they've so greatly set for us. Um, but then on the FRC side, I know there were some teams about MK or some questions about MKCAD and how to contribute to some of the FRC parts. Um, what I'd recommend there is if you see something that's not in the library, you could import it into Onshape if it's a cost part or whatever kind of component that you typically use. You can make it a public part. And then I would reach out through Chief Delphi or one of the other forums to the teams that are kind of running MKCAD and say, hey, we've made this part public. If you want to add it to your library, more than happy to do so. Um, so I'd reach out there. But as long as you upload it and make it a public part, even if it isn't labeled MKCAD at the time of submission, that's okay. A team could still search for that and find it. Um, so I would recommend if you're an FRC team, um, doing it that way. And so when you create the part, if you add some properties to that part with the part number or some other things that could help other teams find it, that'll be useful for next season. And in, in the meantime, we can be working with MKCAD to get those in the MKCAD library, but just have them published so teams can use them in the meantime. Yeah, that, that's great. I definitely know that there aren't as as set guidelines for the FRC side. Last one, last question. Uh, Can you code? Yeah. Yeah, Don, I was going to say, maybe we just go like lightning round in either a one sentence response or cool. we, we say email first at btc.com if you have this question. Can you code on Onshape? Yes, for some cases, feature skip is Feature script is an example and is a lot of fun. You should try it out. Lots of great tools. Should I answer that one? Answer that one. How can assembly animations be submitted? So you can take some sort of screen capture and of your animation and then save that and upload that animation back into your document as a, a separate file in that document so we can take a look at it. Uh, there are teams that went to FTC Worlds last year without wheels and commute, competed quite well. Well, that's a great fact. I'm definitely going to go take a look at that and learn more about that because that's pretty interesting. Thank you for that. I answered that and read that one. So thank you guys. Um, if you do have more questions or concerns, please reach out to us at first at ptc.com. We'll also be having one more webinar that'll be more open format on Tuesday of next week to answer any last minute questions. Thank you for joining us and have a good night. Thanks everybody.